also his daughter Elizabeth Doyle, who was drowned on board. And welcome back. So today we're just outside in the Scorty town at St. David's Church and Graveyard. And I'm actually here to find a family grave with an inscription wrote on it for Elizabeth Lizzie Doyle. I'll tell you a little bit more about Lizzie's story when we get uh, closer to her grave. But first we're actually going to take a look at some headstones first and read them. And then when we find or get closer to Lizzie's inscription on her family's grave, um, I'll tell you a little bit more about her story. So this is a beautiful cemetery, um, St. David's Cemetery, as I said. And let's have a look, beautiful statue here. In fond and loving memory of James Doran. Money Whore House, who died the 13th of February 1918, also his children Patrick and Maggie who died young and his wife Esther is here as well. Esther died in 1946. Um, on the other side then there's a James Dorn who died, if I can just read it, very hard to read. It looks like James died in 1931 but look at that statue, isn't it beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. The Dorns. Right, so let's keep going. That would have been the old entrance into the old church. Look at this one. Somebody has tried to save it. We see Eleanor here and her husband, but everything is gone because it's broken. We see an age 76, but that looks like it was an old headstone. Lovely one here with the rails around it. And you all know now that I love the rails. Erected by Catherine Murphy. In memory of her husband, Patrick, who departed this life, 1860. Age seems to be gone. Catching herself, then is here as well. Beautiful headstone and those beautiful rails around it. But uh, you might notice that somebody has tried to come in and clean it. Look at all of those and all the lichen and those fantastic. Actually, there's loads and loads of rails in this graveyard. Look at this. Erected by Mary Simpson in loving memory of her husband James who died September the 18th 1924 aged. It looks like he was 58 only. Also her daughter Annie Simpson 1933 aged is 25 and the above then Mary. Mary passed away in 1972, I think that says, aged 86, so good age there for Mary. Look at all that lichen. It's almost like somebody comes in and paints them, but that's not the case. Look at all the rails here. Wow, look at that. These are the Staffords. More rails here for the Murphys. And even more here. These ones are white marble. Now it is extremely windy. So let's hope this mic really, really helps. Look at that, that is gorgeous. Erected by John Myrna. In loving memory of his son, William. Who died 1883, aged 25, also his father Nicholas, 1874, aged 84, and his mother Anne, 
she was 74 when she passed away in 1868 and the above John himself 1899 age 68 and this beautiful one here as well beside it so these are all Myrna's Mary Myrna 1920 aged 48 and her husband James is there as well and just here we have a little angel all in the one plot baby John Myrna born 1987 and died March 1988 beautiful little statue there for baby John how beautiful but so sad only three months old or just about let's make our way up here Some broken tombs there. Those big railed ones. But a picture has actually caught my eye here. Our dear sister. Mary. Trees O'Loughlin Darcy. She was 63 when she passed 2014. And I hope I pronounced her first name right. It's quite similar to Maria. Erected by Anastasia Murphy in memory of her husband Edward Murphy, who died 11 to January 1908, aged 56. Anastasia Murphy, October 1941. Their children, James Murphy, 1932, age 32. Mary Curry died January 1941, age 42. And then we have a list of the Curry family just down below. Vera Curry. 2015 wife of Martin Joseph is buried in England beautiful designs on that one we've the grapes the vines sacred heart there in the middle so I'm actually trying to hold my gimbal it's that windy the gimbal is blowing this gorgeous one look at that We have inscriptions here at the side. Margaret, beloved wife of Thomas Mullet, 1894, aged 43, and also their son. He was only 28 when he passed in 1909. We'll take a walk around the, the front of it. Have a look at those rails. We have Thomas Mullet there at the bottom, age 70, and, Mar and Bridget Mullet, 1898 there as well. It's all cemented in, but look at the size of those rails, they're fantastic, all painted silver. So we've loads of rails, you can just see them all up along the way there. All around, there's that beautiful church. All the way down here. The design on these rails. And the cross then in the centre was erected by James Cahoe. Um, Dublin, I think he was from, in memory of his dearly beloved wife, Catherine, 1874, aged just 30.
Right, so another one has caught my eye. It's a cross, a very old cross. Look at that. That is fantastic. I can see the name Connor. Maybe Bridget Connor wrote on it. See all the lich and the way it's taken over on the the cross itself. Absolutely beautiful. Just here, no other inscription on it. We have actually a newer section further up along and we might take a look at that as well. But those rails are just something else. Really, really beautiful. More rails. A tomb here. Inside these rails. And three crosses. Amazing. But just look at all of those headstones. So many. So it's quite difficult to find Lizzie's, um, her family's grave. But I have some sort of an idea. So we'll keep looking until I find the particular area. But uh, there's a beautiful statue up here. So I'm going to go up here. And have a look at it. So just bear with me. Look at that. And it's an angel. And I think at one stage she was probably pointing up. She seems to have lost her her finger there. Let's just zoom in. So this is in loving memory of Walter Joseph Corcoran, I think, JP. Date is gone and also his daughter Eileen. Marion Lett. And it looks like she passed away aged 89 and 70, sorry, 1976 by the looks of it. But a beautiful statue. And those big rails around it. Absolutely stunning. But I do think that the angel might have lost her finger and she's pointing up. Um, she does seem to be holding something, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe you can see that there. Gorgeous memorial. For Walter and his daughter and those big rails. So this is actually the newer section here. So we're just going to take a little walk up here and then I'll bring you to the final resting place or at least the final resting place of Lizzie's family and uh, she's named on that memorial and I'll explain the story then as well as we find her. Right, so we're up at the newer section and look at this beautiful grave. Absolutely gorgeous. With angels, birds, little cherubs, butterflies, a feather. And this is for Louise Quigley, October, 26th of October 1989 to the 17th of December 2018, our much loved daughter and sister. A beautiful memorial there for Louise. You are my angel, my darling, my star and my love. 
we will find you wherever you are. Isn't that beautiful? Beside Louise, we have a much-loved son, brother and friend, Sean Murphy. Sean passed away July 2018, aged just 33. Very handsome young man and a beautiful final resting place for Sean. Beautiful fresh flowers here for him. We have a little angel as well. Happiest and loving memories of Christopher Vincent Gilligan. Beloved brother, uncle and friend. May 2012, age 74. And Christopher is a very handsome man. And that is a gorgeous photo of Vincent. And a beautiful headstone. And we have a verse there down at the bottom as well. So Elizabeth, better known as Lizzie, Lizzie Doyle was 26 when she died on board the Titanic, 15th of April, 1912. Um, Lizzie was actually living in Philadelphia and she came home to take care of her widowed dying father, Martin. She was returning home to America. Is there anyone there? Yes, what do you see? Iceberg, right ahead! Thank you. Iceberg, right ahead! On the starboard! On the starboard! The Titanic hit an iceberg, as we all know the story well. And Elizabeth, along with her cousin Robert, perished. Now, the twist to the story was that her family first thought Lizzie was saved. As she had told them, she had bought a second-class ticket but in fact Lizzie tried to save a few pounds and um, bought a third class ticket and so as I said herself and her cousin both perished on the Titanic and um, the inscription on her family grave is actually just here so we're going to take a look at that now so this is in fact Her family's grave and just here is the inscription for Elizabeth Lizzie Doyle but we read the headstone first so up at the top it says Margaret Rossiter Doyle who died August 1935, aged 50, also her husband, William Rossiter, 1973, aged 89. And then, on the inscription here, I hope we can read it, Martin Doyle Bree and his wife Catherine. Now it says erected by Martin Doyle 
in memory of Catch and Doyle. Eighteen eighty seven, she was just thirty nine. Also his son Robert Doyle, eighteen eighty eight. That looks like twelve. I'm going to get the torch just to see if we can read it a little bit better. Now you mightn't see that my shadow is in the way, but age 12, Robert was only 12. There's a John Doyle here as well. 1892, aged 11 years only. And then the above named Martin, July the 5th, 1911, age 60. And then I'm going to try and get around. Also his daughter, Elizabeth Doyle, who was drowned on board the Titanic, April 1912, aged just 26. And then there's also his baby grandson, Philip, it looks like, 1918, age just one. So Elizabeth Doyle, who was drowned on board the Titanic, April, it must say the 15th, although it looks like the 14th. 1912, age 26. So very, very sad for Elizabeth. And of course, her cousin, Robert Myrna, who also perished with her. And of course, all those who perished on board the Titanic in 1912. I believe there was over 1,500 people perished. So, so sad. So obviously, Elizabeth's body wasn't recovered, but just there, the inscription for her, and she's remembered there with her, her family. Rest in peace, Lizzie, and all those who perished on board the Titanic. So guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care, God bless, and I'll talk to you all soon.